right, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to the Advent of Code 2019 and Erlang Day 4, uh, where I have the opportunity of watching me figure out a problem, go down the path of a suboptimal solution to which you might know a better solution. Uh, but I won't do anything better because it's been like 15 to 30 minutes since I woke up and that's as good as I am. All right, so to this problem for day fourth, this looks like a little spiral on the calendar. I'm sure it looks prettier on the uh, full website where they add little collars when you make progress, but I don't see any of that. All right, the Venus Fuel Depot, only to discover, discover that it's been protected by a password. Oh, there was a password challenge a couple of years ago as well. Let's see if it looks like the same kind of deal. Um, few key facts about the password. It's a six digit number. All right, it's not the same. The value is within the range given in your puzzle input. All right, I don't know what the puzzle input. Okay, two adjacent digits are the same. That has happened before. Going from left to right, the digits never decrease. They only increase or stay the same. All right. Now, there in the range rule, the following are th true. 11111 one, meets the criteria. Double or decrease. Uh, does not meet these criteria. Decreasing pair of digits 50. Yep. Does not meet this. No double. Oh, wait. There has to be a double. There's nothing in the rules that tells me there has to be a double. So this is interesting. That's a new rule, I guess. It's within the range. Two digits and digits are the same. Okay. All right, well, there's an unwritten rule that you need to have two doubles at least. All right, how many different passwords within the range in your puzzle input me these criteria? And the input is only these two numbers. Oh, well, that's an interesting one. All right. That's a fun one. Okay, that one is uh, one we can probably do some testing for about valid and invalid numbers. Uh, since this is so short, usually I do a common test, test suite. Uh, let's make one anyway. Is it plural or singular test? Uh, let me think. It's a very basic thing not to remember, but it is usually singular. That's going to give me time to wake up a bit. Uh, day 04. Sweet, because I'm using common test. Uh, compile, because I don't care. Export all, and don't warn me because I'm exporting all the thing. Oh god, I don't know, I think it's a tuple like that. Alright, no warning. Welcome to me writing tests. The perfect place to make non-stop mistakes and write code that wouldn't pass in production, but because it's made to check production code, it's always good to have it anyway. Uh, so this assertions file that HRL, if you look at almost any source, it's always the eUnit files that are being included. Uh, somewhere around OTP21 or something, they have been moved to um, this level, in, into this file that can be shared. So the all function exports the name of the tests I'm going to use, and I'm not using a config. Good practice would be to, uh, you know, use this function with nothing and just say, like, good passwords. 
examples or something like that. And this is where you would put the description. And uh, let's see. Oops, no, no, that's not the one I want. So those are the rules. I'm going to take them and actually put them here. Uh, two digits. They never decrease. And we had the unexpected rule that uh, because that's not what they said, but that's what they do. What was in that thing? Okay, those are foul. Oh, that's actually use these examples because those were two valid numbers. Uh, those would also be two valid numbers. I don't care that they're treated the same or not, but that's going to be in the final result. keep the example it's actually a bit clearer with it all right uh, oops so I'm going to call it day 04 valid and I'm just going to assert Uh, one, three, five, six, seven, nine is valid. So, 22 is going to be valid, and that's fine. And one, two, two, three, four, five is also going to be valid, but I don't expect it to even be generated in the first place because it's a duplicate of that one. And it would be great if all these duplicates were to be stored in the same level. Uh, at the same time, yeah, I'll need to validate. Okay, so before I write the tests, I'm going to take a few notes of the thing I wanna do. Uh, first of all is validation is likely cheap and cheaper than putting everything in a map because the thing we have to do then is uh, a dupe check on the digits is likely to take lots of memory. And so the result is that we should probably do validation first and then the dupe check. And the dupe check is going to require a bunch of manipulation of the digits that we have to make sure that they are fine. And we are going to do that after the fact and probably after having uh, compressed the number, because uh, uh, dupe, uh, dupe digits and not number uh, are like run length compression in some way. So uh, are going to be on strings. Uh, because the thing is I want to go through the thing and see, oh, that's the same digit and take it out. And then I will be able to take these and put them in a map and see is the value already in there, yes or no, and then just count how many um, how many keys are in the map. And then that's going to tell me my entire result for that function, because the big challenge is going to be on the validation. And the little thing to get back to my tests, because I like to jump a whole lot around, you've probably seen that by now, is I put the OK line at the end there. and that's a bit weird, but the thing is that if you have a complex impression and expression in your assertion and then the test crashes, you are not going to get a good stack trace because it's a tail call. And a tail call in Erlang means that all the values and all the, the information is usually elided. By putting the OK, va the OK value at the end here, I am going to get a more descriptive stack trace for the last assertion that could be taking place in the test. Uh, and now we're going to have the bad tests. So duck password examples. 
and bad. The config value is usually for the stateful aspects of common tests, which uh, frankly are super useful, but not today. So, oh wait, that one is a good test as well. Is it? The following are true. All right, yep. All right. Uh, that config. That's the assertion and two, two, three, four, zero, five, zero. Um, assert not. Jeez, zero, four. And no doubles, because that's the mystery property of that one. There is a requirement for double one, two. And OK. So that's going to be our base. My editor always gives me the warning because it does not support common test properly. But that doesn't matter. Export valid one as well. So we'll start with valid with a digit n. And um, the thing I will want to do because we are going to have a lot of digits to check is to make this checking as effective as possible. So I'm going to um, use the digits and check the number one by one. And the kind of way to do that is let me get into an interactive shell because it's going to be easier. Let's say I have this number. If I divide it by one, I get the entire thing. Uh, by 10, I get only these values. And so the thing that I will do instead is use the remainder. And that will give me each one of the digits one by one like that. And uh, if I then divide them. Oops, it should be by four. And so if I go that way, I have this little funny property uh, that's le that lets me check and get all the digits one by one with simple operations without having to work on a string. And then I can check for all my things, like do I have duplicate values? Um, do I have uh, always increasing values and whatnot? And, um, I will be able to pick this value here as long as um, one, two, three, four, five, remainder of blah, blah, blah. Actually, as long as I divide this value by uh, the same one and it's not equal to zero, because if I were to have that value and then it's equal to zero, then I'm done. So I can use these operations and create myself a bunch of boundaries, I think, um, in using these. So this is going to be a boundary check. I'm going to make a bunch of sub functions to know that I'm iterating properly. So. So bound check, I have the value n, and then I want to do, whoops, something based on this, um, as many digit, and this should be something like, uh, is not equal to zero. I'm going to populate them a bit later. Whoops, I was in the shell here, and this is the little magic thing where um, then I'm going to have a divider and a remainder or something. And I'm going to take the first one for this by hand. And the trick is the reason I want to do it. Oh, shit, I'm checking them backwards. Uh, that works. I just need to uh, 
refers to rules, always increasing and whatnot. So I'm going to flip them around a little bit, none the wiser. I'm going to have this. Actually, the divider is going to... Uh, no need to carry both of them. I only need to carry one because that one is always 10 times smaller than the other one. So... I only do this as long as my boundary check is valid. So the base case is going to be that when and divided by the divider is equal to zero then we are done. Oh, well, it's an undefined next digit. And let's put this on one line because we do a little bit of golfing and next digit. Otherwise, my boundary check is valid. Because let me double check this one in case I have this. Yeah, it's never going unless I'm done with it. And if I have this one, the boundary check should work. The tests are going to tell us if they don't. I'm not doing full-blown TDD where I'm going to check each one of the boundary conditions because, frankly, we are limited in time here uh, because I don't want this to take forever. So considering the boundary check is valid, uh, the operation I'm going to do is I'm going to return OK. I'm going to return the number with the remainder of this through the divider redivided by um, dang it okay new condition when the divider is greater or equal to 10 uh, by 10 oh no that that's because the thing I don't want to Actually, that should be totally fine. So my result there is two. The thing I want to check is when this value here is one, I get zero. And that's the one I don't want to check. I don't want an implicit zero to be everywhere. Uh, technically, it works, though. It doesn't hurt. But the thing is that if I start on the first digit, uh, yeah, I cannot do a division by zero. And I only want these. Oh, wait. So I only need to always start by 10. Remainder 1. Huh. Oh, yeah, because I want to. Am I using the wrong thing? Okay, so I start 100. Oh, okay, I can do this. Wait, 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 wait. Did I flip this around? I thought I had a working thing there. Oh, yeah, the operators are messed up. Stupid me. It should be a divider on the second one here. Oh, early morning, early morning, early morning. All right. So the one I wanted to try was if I just do it by one, it's always going to be zero here. So I necessarily start by 10, but I divide by one. So that's going to work fine. This is all never going to work. Okay, so I don't need to have that little clause. I can just do it straight away. And... Uh, and of course, the FB that, so I will want to divide it by 10. And that's exactly what I want. That's going to give me my value, but then I'm going to want the next iteration to also multiply it by 10. Um, 
and this is going to work fine, but my first digit for validation is going to have to start. If I start at zero, no. You know what? Here's the thing you do, duck. The <laughs> Must start at 10. Here we go. I think that's what I had in the other window in my experiment that told me that this would make sense. And yes, I have to start at 10. All right. And we work around it through documentation. So my bound check is now inlined. And the thing I need to do now is Uh, I'm going to call for the valid function. I have the value. I have the first divider is going to be at 10. Uh, and then my conditions that I have is always, oh, it's always a six digit number. I don't care for that for validation. Uh, I'm going to only, well, is it always six digit numbers? Because, of, yeah, because of the range they give me, but I don't really care for that. Um, Actually, yeah, knowing it's a six-digit number, it's probably a lot easier to check, but I don't care because it's recursive. Uh, so here I am going to store the last digit, and I don't have the last digit yet. So I'm going to store it as undefined. I'm going to need to start somewhere. Uh, that's going to be the first iteration on this one because I can't validate that. So this value here is probably going to be true, false, or undefined. And when it's undefined, I need to check for double digits for the last one. So last digit, I'm going to have a check for double, which is going to be, so far, there are not no double digits. And the moment I know I have a double digit, I don't need to do it. And increasing, always increasing right now is true because I start in nowhere and you're going to see something with this about how I do the validation there. At least two digits must be double the number. They always increase. I check for the doubles. Um, okay. So this is going to be the thing. And all right. So valid and divider um, with the divider, uh, then those was, if it's undefined for the last digit, I'm going to populate it by hand. Um, that one I said was doubles and that one was incrementing. So for the first digit, and this is what this tells me, um, Call me, okay, next, uh, digit, and then next div is equal to next digit of n and the current divider. For this value, for this value, um, so I know that by default, next divider is going to be there. Now my digit is being set for that one. Doubles is unchanged because it's the first number and the incrementation remains the same, which should be true. Um, all right, this one is interesting because my base case is not the same thing as what as I usually have. So div um, last, doubles and incrementation. Now, k's next digit of n and div of, and this is where I do my actual recursion now. If it's okay and I get d and a next digit, and my next digit validation is already done here, so that's going to be fine. 
if it is true, that's going to be a thing. If it's undefined, now's my base case. And the thing I'm going to return is doubles and also incrementation. And that tells me that the number is valid because those are the two conditions I'm checking. Um, if it is not correct, then I am going to, well, if I still have digits, then the thing I'm going to do is compare D with the last. And so if I can do this uh, valid and next divider, last is now D. And now for my comparisons, if doubles was already true, it's going to be double, let me put that going to be doubles or else because if it's already true I want it to be true um, D is equal to last and that's my condition for this check it's going to be a constant time for all of them and increasing is going to be is it already increasing and also is D greater or equal to the last um, and so that was, oh, they only increase, right, from left to right. They never decrease. So I'm going to have to flip that around because I'm testing from right to left to mean that the last digit is always greater or equal to the current one. All right, had a little interruption for early work stuff. Uh, but yes, valid should be this result. Then I have the final comparison, and this is the end. And so we'll see how that works. Let me just tap that and run my tests. Let's see where it goes. Uh huh. Interesting. So I do get a failure for that one. Uh, one, three, five, six, seven, and nine. One, three, five, six. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That one is not valid because it has no double. It's a valid example of the rule, but it's not a valid number. That's tricky crap. All right. So, okay, let's jiggle with the test a bit. We're going to put that one in the bad ones, but I'm going to voluntarily make it valid just to make it pass because from the rules, this is what should be happening. 22 is valid. Whoa. Now that's an interesting one. Why is 22 not considered to be valid? equals to last. So this is, let's use a fancy little feature that we designed for this. Uh, we don't need this. All right, all right, all right. So this is valid with five arguments. Um, So day zero four. Break on trace. I'm going to crown. Uh, day zero four valid with how was he? It was five arguments. Uh, local again. And. Day 04, valid 22. Okay, so that means that the first time it's false. Mm. And what do I need? Let's get back to. So if I start here with 10 and divide by 1, I get 2. 
I get two, so that should reasonably work. Oh, wait. Why am I getting the... Oh, no. That was for the value. 22 here. I get two here once. I'm going to trace for more things. Let's just trace for all the functions in that thing and get the entire trace. Yeah. Okay, so it returns false. It is called with this 22. I'm going to add a little cheat where I want to see the result of all the traces. All right, so going through the entire thing I call next digit. Next digit returns me two with the next value being 100 for that one. So I call the validation on 22, the value 10. And it's undefined, so I'm skipping a step. Oh. Right. Is it that? So that's my boundary condition that's not checking, so I'm trying to. But it's not equal to zero, that's fine. But this one is it's still valid. So my boundary condition needs to be That's right. That's still good. Oh, God, I feel like I've taken an approach that's more tricky than it should have been. Yeah, so that one never works because there's no remainders. Damn it. Uh, what am I going to check it with? Because my boundary condition is not as good as I wanted it to be. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So the thing is that as long as my Fider. Because that's still good. So I want one digit more in my remainder than I want in the other ones. So the way to check for one digit more then might be actually. So if I just want to know if it has more digits, that one is still valid. I want it to be true. That's going to work. The one I want to fail is this one to be false. While this one is true. So, of course, right now both are true. But if, you know, I'm just going to play a bit with the digits. Now suddenly it works. So, uh, that might be good enough when the divider is greater than n times 10. Maybe that's going to work. We'll see. Let's go back to our tests. That seems to pass. All right. We're going to, oh, uh, nope. Uh, let's run that in the right shell. Compile and advent the o for uh, its race. Wait, 
that's not good enough because right now I'm only checking if something is valid or not. And this is not what I'm supposed to do. So if a digit is valid, now that's good. The next thing I want to do is going to be the dupe digit. I'm going to put them in a map. And the way to do that is I'm going to uh, turn it to a string. It's a list, and I'm going to use a list because it's going to be a bit more compact for that one. And I am going to simply um, uh, maps. is key and uh, actually. This is going to also be named the dupe, but it's going to, uh, it's going to, I'm just going to compress. That fits better with what we discussed earlier. So if the string is in the map of true, then just return the map. False, then insert. Train in the map with just okay to say just true. Say it's in there, and that's it. So compressing is going to um, use a list, and so we have a list. I'm going to compress with a list, and the um, explicit accumulator for these. So the compression is going to be when I'm done, I return the accumulator and the accumulator can be flipped. It doesn't matter, I think, for this one, what happens there. I'm just going to flip all the digits. It should be the same. They all have six digits, uh, so it's not a problem. So head to tail when the accumulator has the same head. Uh, this is the ACK, so I'm going to compress only the tail with the accumulator. I'm saving the same digit, and in the other case, I know it's different, so I'm only compressing the tail with the head in the accumulator. And that's my entire compression for each one of the digits that's actually valid. The entire string then is going to be generating all the numbers in a loop. So I'm going to count all the numbers from what where the ranges we were given. This is our explicit range. Uh, and so I'm going to count from this one to this one. That's going to give me actually yep. Words. That's just going to give me the direct result. That's the entire thing. Uh, so the count passwords function is going to be going from x from let's call it a to b when a is greater than b. Then I know I'm done. Oh, goddamn! I need to do tail recursion again. So, A, B, and I'm going to give them an empty map. That's going to be the cache. And this is going to give me a resulting map. And what I do there is map size of map. This is all I'm going to need. Count passwords, A, B, map. A, B, and eh, return to map. So for that one, the thing I'm going to do is uh, okay. 
So A is the current password, so I'm going to say K A. If A is valid, then the thing we want to do is uh, count the passwords of A plus 1, B, and the dupe A in the map, and that gives me the new map. Otherwise, just count of A plus 1, B, and the same map. I don't need to dedupe them in that case. I don't need to store them in the map. They were not a valid password at any point in time. That should be working. So let's compile, check for the race result, and the value is going to be 211. Let's see if that works. 211 and submit it. Oh, God damn it. My answer is too low. So I've got input data. So the thing I'm wondering here is if I'm allowed the digits to be adjacent or not. Like they can double but not decrease because it tells me that there's no double, it should fail. But the example here does not tell me about the rules. Value is within the range, that is always covered. Two inches in digit. No, okay. That is a rule. Two are the same. Uh, I think I understand where I misunderstood the rule. I thought that these two numbers would be the same, but this is the input rule I thought I had. I don't need to do the entire deduping thing. Which brings us back to this section, where a suboptimal solution is the only thing I can come up with in the things I wake up with. Uh, so the entire dedupe step is probably not required. The only thing I need to do is map. Uh, understanding the requirements is the worst one. In fact, I don't even need to store that. It's only n plus 1. I no longer need a stupid map. I only need to store some counter. Oh, God damn it. Then I have the counter. This is all I need. Uh, let me get rid of this stupid map everywhere. If do, the dupe is no longer required. Compression is no longer required. Only validity should count. <sighs> All right, let's see if that works differently. Arithmetic expression on line 32, so I went too fast. Oh yeah, here we go. And now I get 1653. God damn it. Too clever for my own good. And that worked! Continue to part two. Are not part of a larger group. Given, but ignoring the range rule, the following are now true. Digit never decrease and are repeated digits. I exactly know. Okay. Are not part. Okay, so I don't want more than two digits in a row. So I'm going to play with valid rules. I'm going to call it valid2 because screw rewriting all the things. I'm going to go with good2 and bad2. And let's put these in here. I'm going to reuse good to. So this one I assume is no longer good, but let's copy paste all of them first. And to valid two. I'm going to 
so this one here is now valid. Oops. Ah. Valid to that one is true because the digits never decrease and all the previous two are exactly two digits long. That's fine. No longer meets one, two, three. Okay, I'm just going to reuse exactly the one they gave me because at this point, why bother? Sure, not. This should be valid too. And Is that the one they gave me, or I just kept the wrong one? One, uh, one two. Yeah, that's the thing. It's one, one, two, two, three, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, four is no longer valid, and. Oh, it still contains a double 22. Wait, so it's literally double 22 that they want? No. The two adjacent digits are not part of a larger group. Oh, so they need an exactly double. Is that so? Oh, so they want... An, wait... Two adjacent adjacent matching digits are not part of a large. Okay, so it's if it's more than two, it no longer counts. Ah, uh, you garbage thing. Okay, this is important. And I heard they all four valid two. Uh, one 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 two two works because. There is one matching group that is exactly two in length. Okay, uh, and I only had these three examples. It's not super hard considering that most of the challenge was just figuring out this stupid stuff here of counting the password that I thought made sense. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is next digit logic remains the same. I'm going to write valid2 right here. And valid2 is going to use that. It's going to be undefined still. Uh, but to calculate my doubles, which were false. Look, we know this buddy here is false. No need to do that. It's going to be false, but I'm going to track the last digit I had for that one. And the incrementation. Oh, valid two. Let's just do it this way. Okay. So, let me explain the thing I'm doing. I'm going to track the last digit and the last digit that was useful in the doubles that I have. Um... Yeah, that should work. We'll see. I was just thinking uh, double plus double. Uh. Yeah, no, I'm going to take a different approach to that one. Uh, I'm going to keep the double, but I'm going to, in fact, count the sequence. And the sequence here is going to start at zero, and the sequence is going how many times have I seen that same last digit. And so my sequence for that one is going to remain here. Double, and my sequence is now set to one digit I have seen before in that one, and that's the one I've just seen right here. So double sequence 
Tumbles is nice and shit. Um, and here I'm going to go for sequence. Uh, if D is equal to last, okay, let's calculate. New sequence is equal to K's. Uh, yeah, if D is equal to the last, then sequence plus one. Uh, otherwise, if D is not equal, I'm using the Richard O'Keefe way of doing thing where I use explicit values for that one, then sequence becomes one automatically. And and here I ooh, here I change my logic to be storing the new sequence sequence and doubles is going to be or else Yeah, so here's the thing. Now I'm getting the same result if new sequence is equal to two, and that's the thing, right? I need to store both which number I used to make the double. Uh, yep, so I'm going to need these two values, and it's going to, I'm going to just use here undefined because who cares? Double is staying the same here. Here I'm just going to use um, the double value here is going to be, and I'm going to call it the double digit. Wait, last digit. I no longer need this. I played with my function signatures a bit too much. And here's the new fancy clause. It's going to be this. As long as DD is okay. So the new sequence equal to two makes sense. The thing is, if the sequence gets greater. And I get this. Ah, uh, that won't work. Okay, so I just thought of this number right here, right? So this one should be valid because the two two sequence is good, but that one isn't. So I need to check. Okay, I know what I need to check. So only when I get a new sequence. Here's how it works. I'm going to go back a little bit on these. So what I'm going to do for that one, I'm going to check, okay, has it been doubles or else? That's good. Um, the new sequence, sequence is equal to two. And also, new sequence is smaller than it is, is equal to one. And so when that happens, I just ended a sequence that had two digits in it. Um, I, yeah, I just ended a sequence that I had two digits in it, uh, and I didn't go any bigger. So that way that tells me that I've just ended it. And so if I get to a sequence of three digits, I had a sequence of two, but a new sequence would have been set to three and that won't pass. And so that will give me my doubles value that should work. Now, uh, I renamed that one to double. I have D for, what's the D again? D is the current digit. Next divider, that should work. Yeah, head mismatch, huh. not even the right argument count. So that's the last sequence, that's the double, that's the anchor. Next D to last sec double. All right, 
double is unbound. Here we go. Then it's going to complain that. Oh yeah, of course I don't need it. Unused, unused. That's good. Let me export valid two. We can run. Thanks. Oh god. Oh, wait. Really? I'm a champ. Okay, that passes. Now we're going to just tie it all up in the thing. Uh, so here's the thing. I want to... One. I'm just going to pass the validation function explicitly because I don't want to rewrite the entire thing. Uh, I'm going to call it a predicate in that one. I'm not needing it here. And so what this is going to let me do is just reuse the freaking same thing everywhere. So here, oops, it's just going to be count password and send value to, and that should be good to go. And that's around the same speed. Copying the thing, let's see what we get. Hopefully this works because I'm close to an hour long video. Ah, goddamn, it doesn't work. Too low. So what did I mess up on that one? Let's go reread the problem statement. This is extremely annoying. Um, the two adjacent are not part of a larger. Digits never decrease and are that exactly two. No longer meets the criteria because the only repeating group is larger group of 1444. Yep, my test passes that. Even two, even though one is repeated more than twice, it still contains a double. So, uh, this happens quite a few times where all the examples they give you are good. Uh, but not the rest. So, that's a bummer. Because now we have to figure out what the bug is without seeing what's in the specification anymore. We've got 900 numbers, and so we are clearing some that are valid. Uh, but won't do it. So, obviously, the problem is somewhere in there. The rest of it shouldn't have changed too much. And let me split my screen to go look at the old valid function. Oop, I copy-pasted something and right. The next digit still works the same. The counter still works the same because we have the same stupid result there. Um, we do expect probably our value to be in the range between the two of these because uh, the rules are stricter, but this one represents an upper bound on what we had. Uh, my new sequence, if the same digit is equal to the last, I increment the sequence, the new sequence is passed here. Am I putting all the arguments in the right order? Next, last, the sequence is the new sequence, which has been either incremented by one, if there's one there, um, and otherwise that, okay. Then if I double the value, if it has been true once, it remains true once. If the sequence value is equal to two, and the new sequence is one. Oh, am I doing this in a delayed manner? No, the same digit is equal to the last. My sequence ranked starts at one. So if I'm at one on the last digit, I get the next digit, it gets set to two. 
this is going to be fine. And I'm going to iterate with the new sequence that is set there. Let's see if I get a third one. Uh, then I'm going to get a new sequence with a value of 3. And that's going to be fine. If it's only there. So what the hell? Okay. So I'm going to do a thing where I take a little break and come back at it later and hope that I will have had a bolt of brilliance and figured it out. So I'm going to put you on the little pause screen. I'm going to pause the recording and think about it some more because right now I'm in a hole where nothing works. Okay, I just thought of something. This is not the bug, but this is going to be the way I'm going to find about the bug. So I complain that I don't have enough examples to do the only th the, the entire thing uh, that I want to do. So I'm going to, you know, I have more examples on this one. So I'm just going to reuse the sections from the first one and re-add them for validation and just check them all. And maybe this will give me something. So valid to that one was already uh, yeah, so that one is for the second one is, oh wait, okay, yeah, that one is valid. That one is no longer valid because it doesn't have the double sequence. And so, um, assert not, okay, this one here remains valid. This one here should remain valid. This one, sure this one is no longer valid. And so let's go get the negative ones from the previous case. Those should all remain invalid because we have stricter rules and not anything else. So let's see what we get on these. Uh, run the tests. Good. Good, good, good. We got a failure. And oh, that's interesting. Okay, since it's the value here with 22, um, this instantly tells me that this is probably related to a cool boundary condition. And the boundary condition is that I only store the last sequence numbers here uh, if the next digit has been found. So for a case where what I'm checking is something like this, right? Um, this is not going to match. This is not going to match because there's three of them. But then I'm getting, I'm getting 22 and this is when the thing ends. So it's not just the check for double I need to do. It's the check for double um, or else, oh, let me put it that way, uh, the sequence that I have right now is equal to 2. And so what this is going to give me is, you know, that boundary check that I had here, I'm repeating it in this place. And now if I run my tests again, they pass with the stricter one. And I'm guessing that if I'm run the entire race, now I get, yeah, the number is in between what we had before, which was 900 something and the 1600 that I have here. So this one might work. And let's see it. And yes, it passed. I only needed a few more tests or to not throw my older tests away. All right. This took even longer than the other ones. It was supposed to be a simple one, but I managed to spend a lot of time developing something I did not even need. And if that is not the essence of programming, I don't know what is. Uh, it's a happy mistake. We managed to do some deduplication and uh, whatnot, even though we didn't need it. So see you tomorrow for day five. Have a good day.